Hey up, Mr. Josh here. Guess what? It's cold. Oh, why do I live in the north of Spain? It's August and it's raining again as usual. Oh, I need my tea. Anyway, welcome to this listening and understanding answers video. If you're new here, you need to um, click a link underneath this video that will take you to my website. There you can download a question sheet. Under the title of the question sheet, you'll see a link to video. Watch that video as many times as you like, answer the questions, then come back here to see what you got right and wrong. So yeah, hi, it's cold. It is so cold. Mm. Oh, I need to get back to Asia, I really do. Ah, so here we are again, another video. I think this is number 12. I could be wrong though, I'm losing count. So in this video, it's from the channel Sailing La Vagabond which I have been following for, oh, when did I start? I think I started watching it in about 2015. And I watch it every week when they post videos. I'm always kind of conflicted when I'm watching Sailing Le Vagabond, because some of you might remember me talking about this before, but I hate the ocean. As far as I'm concerned, the ocean is big, blue, and wet. We don't belong there, we shouldn't go near it, just leave it to the fish. Everything in the ocean either wants to kill you, eat you, or try to have sex with you. We just don't belong. And what's more, I can get seasick just staring at a glass of water. So like, no, me in the ocean, no, not happy bedfellows. But I've been watching these guys for a long time, as I said. And I think the reason being is because of the story. From what I understand, Elena is the creative one of the two who does all the video editing and blah, blah, blah. She knows how to tell a good yarn. It's not like so many other of these sort of vloggy type channels where it's like, aren't we fabulous? Look at what we're doing. We're so incredible. You can't be like us. They're not like that. They are much more down to earth, real sort of people. I've never met them. This is only what I am assuming from what I've heard and what I see on, on the channel. So the reason why I chose this particular episode is because it gives you, as a new watcher, an introduction into what they're doing. There are other videos of theirs that I was going to use, but I thought in the end I'd use this one because it's like an introduction and it explains everything about them. So, you know, if you like it, follow them as well. So anyhow, without any further ado, let's get into this. Um, this is going to be a bit of a balancing act between my tea and my tablet. Uh, I should probably put one of these down, shouldn't I? I'll put the tablet down and keep hold of the tea. It's more important at this minute. So, let's get into this. A family's plan to sail the world. Question number one. The video opens up with Riley and Elena making ready to set sail for the day. What day is it? So this is just a simple question to open up and the answer is Friday, March the 1st and it's seven in the morning. If you're thinking to yourself, when did they say that? They didn't, it was on the phone. Remember what I keep saying? Language is not just about what you hear. There's always other things floating around that give you information. Pay attention. Question two. Where are they setting out from and in which direction are they heading today? So they're setting out from St. Augustine and they are heading south to an unknown anchorage. Question three. What is the name of Riley and Elena's stowaway? So the name of their stowaway is Lenny and Lenny obviously is their new son. So if you're wondering what a stowaway is, Traditionally, it's someone who gets on a boat without permission. They want to leave wherever they are and sail off into the distance without having to pay or work for it. Question four. Riley is putting up a light wind sail so they can travel at a reasonable clip. What does it mean to travel at a reasonable clip? So the expression to travel at a reasonable clip just means to travel at a reasonable speed. Clip is like speed. And this is not specific to sailing. You can say it about pretty much anything that's in motion. Uh, you might want to say, oh yes, my son can ride his new bike at a fair clip, meaning he can ride it fairly fast. So, fair clip, reasonable clip, whatever. It's to do with speed. Question five. When did Riley buy the original La Vagabond? So he bought the original La Vagabond in 2012 from a couple of crazy Italians, I think he described it as. And it's kind of funny to me that he bought it in 2012 because it's the same year that I abandoned England. So, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of weird how things match up, isn't it? Question six. In which country did Riley break his neck while body surfing? So he broke his neck body surfing in Brazil. And if you listen to Elena's 
narration, she says that his dad always says it was a catalyst for him buying La Vagabond. So you might be wondering, what does he mean by a catalyst? Well, in this example, a catalyst is something that provokes an action. So for me, for example, my catalyst for leaving England was because I was working stupid amount of hours as a truck driver just for the privilege of going back to work again the next week. Yes, it's true that I do still have to work and I am penniless most of the time, but uh, much better for it. At least I'm not working 60 hour weeks. Question seven. Riley's main reason for buying a boat was because he wanted to stop traveling. True or false? This would be true or false. It's false. The reason he bought La Vagabond was that he was sick of living out of a backpack, you know, a rucksack. He didn't want to be a backpacker for the rest of his life. He wanted a home that could travel with him all around the world. So he bought a boat. Me, personally speaking, I'd rather buy a camper and stay on land. The romance of the sea, pfft, I don't see it myself. Question eight, where was Elena living when they first met? Elena was living on the Greek islands, playing music for a travel company. Question nine, name two ways in which Elena made money to pay for her travels after leaving school. Okay, so I only asked you for two ways, but there were more. So obviously, playing music for the travel company. She also used to do busking. So busking is when you play music on the street with a hat out, say, give me money for playing music to you. She also worked as a dive master, that's teaching people how to go scuba diving. And she also did the whole bartending and waitressing thing, which seems to be a very popular way of making money when you're traveling. Question 10, how many nautical miles have they sailed in five years? So in five years, they've done over 70,000 nautical miles. That's not the same as miles on land, it's nautical miles. There's a conversion thing somewhere, go look it up if it's really important to you. And not to mention, they actually taught themselves how to sail the boat. Which is a worrying thing, I don't think I want to be on the high seas if I don't know how to drive the boat. And since then, they've even written a book about learning how to drive a boat if you want to. So go to their website and look it up and buy it if, uh, if you suddenly get the urge to drive a boat. By the way, I know it's sailor boat, not driver boat, but you know. Question 11. How old is Lenny at the time of this video? So at the time of filming this video, Lenny is just 12 years, 12 years old? 12 weeks old, God dear, spot the English teacher. 12 weeks old, which is why they're making this video. They've just got back on board. They've only been on the boat a little while with the new baby. And now it's time to start thinking about making plans, which is the whole point of this video. Question 12. Riley mentions the proverb, the best laid plans of mice and men. What is the meaning of this proverb? So the meaning of this proverb is that you make all these plans and then they go wrong. There's a very similar one, something like, while we make plans, God is laughing at us, or something like that, I can't remember. But it's the idea of, you know, you make all the best plans you can, and then fate, the cosmos, God, whatever, gets in the way and destroys your plans for you. Question 13. What has Elena had to learn to do recently? So recently, since she has the baby in tow all the time, she's had to learn to do things one-handed and also sometimes with her legs or feet. And seeing as she does quite a bit of yoga, I'm guessing that, um, you know, being bendy is paying off right now. Question 14. What does Riley think he is guaranteed to be doing when he's an old man? So what he believes he'll be doing is running a cruiser net channel. Now, don't quote me on this because I'm not a world authority on it, but from what I understand, uh, it's usually run by one old boy in front of a microphone. And it's sort of like an unofficial public broadcast service where they update locals on weather conditions and events of interest to them. And it's to do with the boating community. More than that, I don't know. If you really need to know it, Google it. Question 15. They begin to lay out their plans for the future. What is the name of the famous route that they definitely will not be doing? So the route they are definitely not doing is what's known as the Northwest Passage, which takes you up through Alaska and all that lot, which up until recently was not doable. Although now apparently because of melting ice caps and blah, 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 there is an actual route that you can do quite easily, which is kind of creepy. But uh, yeah, hasn't anyone ever seen the movie Titanic? Why would you want to go that way? Ugh. Icebergs and boats, no, not good mix. I think if you wanted to do that, you'd have to fit the front of the boat with some kind of a bull bar or something, you know? Question 16. The first possible route would take them to the Mediterranean where Riley thinks the food is ridiculous. 
Does this mean he thinks the food is good or bad? So this is another green question and it's down to how you understand it. But in this case, when Riley says that the food is ridiculous, he means that the food is good, which may sound a bit strange. Normally when you say something is ridiculous, it's a negative thing, it's bad. But no, in this case, he means that the food is really good. It's ridiculously good. Question 17. The second option would take them to the Galapagos Islands. Which famous canal would they pass through? The famous canal they'll pass through is the Panama Canal, which is what splits North and South America. And apparently, if memory serves me right, the guys who were part of the planning and development of the whole Panama Canal, I'm pretty sure they were instrumental in finding a cure for malaria because that was the big problem with trying to work in that area. Everyone just died of malaria, which is um, not a good thing. But I could be wrong. Who knows? Anyway, if I'm wrong, tell me. Question 18. Why is Elena not keen on the third option? So the reason she's not happy with this is because it would mean Riley doing single-handed sails, that's him traveling on the boat by himself, in some of the most dangerous seas in the world. That's all the stuff at the bottom of South Africa. But he does say, you know, it's on his bucket list of things that he wants to do. If you don't know what a bucket list is, then you should watch the Will Smith video that I did a few weeks back. I'll put a link up here so you can go and find it. And it explains to you what a bucket list is. But yeah, there's a serious possibility that if Riley actually did this, it could be the last bucket list item that he does. Question 19. Where do they plan to spend their son's first year? So Elena kind of glosses over this a bit quickly, but she says they're going to spend it in the Bahamas because it's relatively warm and comfortable there. And if they need to escape for the hurricane season, they can just scream up the side of America up to maybe New York and Maine. Question 20. They have just sailed 200 miles south. Is the weather better or worse? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's the sound of thunder. Wonderful weather for August, isn't it? Anyway, the reason that they have sailed 200 miles south is because they want to get into warmer weather. Question 21. Elena begins to close out the video by singing a song. What interrupts her flow? So the thing that interrupts her flow, and it's written along the bottom of the screen, you don't actually see it, is that Lenny starts burping. Which I guess when you're trying to sing a song, it would be somewhat distracting. Incidentally, if you like Elena's singing, go to their website and you can download or buy a CD, I can't remember which it is, uh, an album of her music that she wrote herself. And lastly, question 22. Why are they sailing super fast down the coast of America? So this is also kind of answered in the question previously about that they need to get to warmer weather. You know, they got a small child on a boat. It doesn't have proper heating and all that. Or I think it does, but it's very expensive. So it's better off just to be in warmer weather. And that's why they are screaming southwards. So I hope you got some useful information out of that. And you know, you found a new channel that you might want to follow. And if nothing else, it might inspire you to go out and buy a boat and sail off around the world. Me personally, I won't be doing that anytime soon for all the reasons I've already mentioned. Although I've got to confess that um, I might buy a van soon and try and finish the trip that I started last year around Europe because it kind of bugs me that I had to cut that journey short. So who knows, maybe I'll go and buy a van. But anyhow, that's me. So I will leave you. Don't forget, subscribe, watch a playlist, hit the like button and share. I'm doing this for free, you know, send it to someone who might find it useful. Anyhow, I'll see you in the next one next Thursday. Ciao for now.